All right, this question for some of you is going to take two seconds, but I, I get why it's going to be confusing. Um, first of all, we need to recognize that we have an equation. Um, it is an exponential equation. However, it does have this little kind of quirky exponent here, which I don't love. And the reason that that exists is that uh, exponent represents um, kind of the number of months, uh, the x at least represents the number of months that are passing. However, they're asking what's going to happen every year. So right away, my brain is already like, okay, well, if x equals 12, then that's a year. So that probably is going to get factored in somehow. Um, conveniently, if I plugged 12 in for x, right, what would happen? We'd have uh, f of 12, so that's one year, 5,470 times 0 0.64, and then this is 12 over 12. But 12 over 12 is just 1. So a year is a nice happy number here because it makes us kind of return to the normal exponential which doesn't have any fractions or any weird things going on. So now it's just like, okay, how do you read this? Well, this matches much more nicely with the open formula that I use for any percentages situation, including exponential functions. So to match things up, the open formula to me works like this. You have uh, the O times one plus or minus P to the t is equal to n. It kind of looks like the, the word open, and it comes from the uh, open formula that I use for normal run-of-the-mill percentages. So the O is the 5470. That's the original amount that was, I guess, um, this piece of equipment was worth. Um, the n is the new amount, so that's going to be kind of like my f of 12 here, so it could go the other way as well. So that's how much it's going to be worth after a certain amount of time has passed. And in this case, the time is one year, or 12 months, same thing. Um, so that's convenient, because now they're asking for the percentage, and that is really represented by this piece, in this case, one plus or minus p. So we just need to convert this 0.64 into that. Now because they told us it was a decrease, we know that it was really gonna be one minus p. And so this is where it gets a little quirky, is one minus p is the 0.64. Right? So notice that if we were kind of building this equation from scratch, we would, we would take some percentage, we'd plug it in for P, and then we'd one minus that number, and then we'd be left with the 0.64. So we have to kind of backtrack. Where did this come from, this 0.64? The percentage that they're asking for is not 64. That's the trap. And we should sense that that's a little too easy. We're getting too close to the end of the section where we would expect these kinds of shenanigans to kind of mess with us, but there's a little bit of a twist, and it's fine if we understand the formula because we can kind of untwist the question. All we need to do here is solve for p. So we'd subtract one, and we'd get minus p is equal to negative 0.36, drop those negatives, and we get p is 0.36, which Whenever we have this open formula, the percentage is written as a decimal, so that is uh, actually 36%, choice C, and that's the answer. Um, yeah, that's how I would do it. Uh, another way that's possible, um, we are able to plug points into equations in a more formulaic way um, if we want. Uh, we clearly have an equation. Um, the points I would always plug in are starting with zero, right? So let's, if we want to figure out what's happening in a year, let's do it by making a year go by. But start with the normal, like, what's the baseline? And if you plugged it in, you get zero over 12, it's, it's zero, and then 0.64 to the zero is one. So it's kind of, you know, this is why the original value is the y-intercept, the starting point. So that would be our first point. Then after a year goes by, 12 months, we would just plug that in and now I could use the calculator. So I'd have uh, 12 over 12 is one. So 0.64 to the 12th is a very small number. I'm gonna multiply that by 5,000. Oops, sorry, oh, nope, see? I'm doing 0.64 to the first. So 0.64 times 5,470 is uh, 3,580 cents. Now, from there, I can just find the percentage manually because I have two values, right? I have a starting value and then the value after a year. So now I would use my more traditional open formula, which just says, okay, well, what's the, what's the difference in decrease? So um, for this, uh, I guess I'd still use the one plus or minus P. Um, what are they asking for? Yeah, if the value de decreases each year by P percent, right? So we would actually need to find the decrease. So, I don't like this method, but I'm going to do it. Um, 
you would subtract to find the difference because the difference is what the decrease is. So 5470 minus 3500.8 0, 0. is 196920. And so of, so open, of my original value of 5,470, I don't know the percentage, but what percentage is the 1969.20? So now I would just divide by 5470, 5470, and 5470. Yeah, P is 0 0.36, 36%. The reason I don't like that is um, it requires this extra step of doing this, this subtraction. And the reason uh, I would have done this differently if it were just kind of me is um, I would have kind of come back to the final version of the open formula just to really confuse you. One, two, three. One plus or minus P equals N. So just to bring them all together since we're talking about it, this is for simple percent of a number. Right, so the 1969 is what percentage of the 5470 that I started with. Simple percentage, the kind of thing you would probably do every day. This is percent change, right? So if I wanted to see how much had changed, in that case, I would have done the 5470, one minus P is equal to 3500 point 80, because now I'm trying to solve how much decreased. Now that is the exact same math that we did before, so I'm not going to do it again. You'd still get 36%, but that's kind of how I would have thought about it. And then finally, the other version, the most advanced version, is just a general exponential equation where the percent change is happening multiple times over time, which is why we get an exponent at the T. This is a lot, but this is why you should follow my channel because I will do this kind of lesson outside of the context of this one particular question when it's mo more understandable. So subscribe, and that way you're notified every time I post a new lesson and uh, visit my website for more as well. And hopefully all of that together will get you this question or something similar right next time.